Hello, everyone. This is Chrisum, and I'd like to welcome you to this conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experiences. Uh, today, I want to read to you something that I just shared uh, on the groups and on and I, and I think on my page, but I would like to share this with people because it's an important con concept and it comes up all the time. It comes up all the time. People are asking me these questions, you know, all the time and you know, I want to be able to to give you a concise uh, reading and understanding and say hello to a few people. So, hi Emma and Rosemary, <clears throat> to May and David, good to see everyone. Um, uh, this is the piece that uh, the Kundalini wrote through me uh, in 2018. It's called Living the Kundalini Contrast. And so, so let me see if I can do it this way here. So here we go. You will at once want to be the normal person, and at the same time, you will know that you are not that person. You will want to fit in, and you will know you will not fit in. You will want to be like everyone else on the planet. But this is not that path for you. Kundalini doesn't come to most people. It doesn't come to those who must fit in. For there is a greater cause and celebration of your life than fitting in and being the same as everyone else. That celebration is the gift of grace that you are. That cause is the transformation of yourself into a semi-divine presence of that grace upon this world. You are extremely special and extremely normal at the same time. There will not be much self-aggrandizement when you reach a certain level of understanding this. You will know within your cells that all humanity has this, but there, but there needs to be examples to work from. That education for others can come from you. It must come from you. You are the living, conscious spark of divine grace upon this world. Others have this in the dormant state, but yours is activated or awakened. And this brings it ever fresh into the current reality for you and all who interact with you. So please practice the safeties as much as you can and allow for the ever-increasing divine fulfillment to bring its love and brilliance to you and through you. People want to be normal so much. You want to fit in. It could be that uh, your whole life, your whole, <laughs> your whole life, you've always been that that uh, that stranger. You've always been the lone wolf. You've always been that person who got uh, who was not as social as the others. So you didn't get picked for uh, elementary school teams as much as as say other kids did, or you didn't. You know, you weren't as uh, as much of a, a social butterfly or a social icon as, as you may have wanted to be when you were in uh, school. You want to fit in now. You know, you're an adult now or a young adult or, or an older adult, and you want to fit in, especially the, the, the longer you're on this planet. Uh, the more you want to fit in. You know how things work. You know, you, you pay your taxes. You have your licenses for this or that. And you know what it is to, to, to fit in. And yet, of course, you don't really fit in. It's important that you not fit in. Okay. And I'm not saying that, you know, you're, you're an 
anarchist or you know you you any form of social liability or or you know that you become a rising star on YouTube or you know some sort of a thing like that I'm just suggesting that you were never meant to be a normal person in the sense that normalcy is basically uh, related to the unawakened and it's the herd mentality so if the herd of of humans in the society you live in says ah ha, ha, well then you know you must do this this or that and if you don't do this this or that then you're not normal and you will not fit into the herd you'll be on the outside of the herd and the outside of the herd in a in a wilderness sense means that it's easier for you to get picked off by a predator we feel this instinctually so everybody tries to fit in because they don't want to get eaten by a wolf or a tiger or you know any kind of a of a predator so we want to fit in there's safety in numbers except the kundalini you know you won't fit in when you have the kundalini because you're experiencing things and you're seeing things and you're understanding things that the normal uh, herd of of humanity doesn't see hear or experience now you can hide it you can hide it to a certain degree uh, but you'll feel it in the, anyway. You, you may be able to, you know, be in society and be enlightened at the same time without uh, pulling a lot of attention to yourself. And this is good. You know, I mean, I think a lot of Kundalini people do that all the time right now. You can be working in London, you know, a really dense city in, in the United Kingdom. <clears throat> you can have the Kundalini. And you can you can go to work, uh, you can ride the trains to work, you can ride a a black taxi to work, you can you can ride your bike to work, you know you can walk to work, uh, you can work with people that are working in an office or a laboratory or a you know any number of of, of positions that you run into uh, in in say this area of London and. You can be fully uh, infused with the Kundalini and going through all of the Kundalini things, seeing the visions, hearing, uh, you know, hypersonic frequencies, uh, hearing the Nada or the Naad, uh, experiencing entities, unfortunately, <laughs> sometimes. Uh, you can be experiencing all the different Kundalini phenomena, the Kriyas, the rashes on the skin, I mean, you name it, you know, there are so many. Uh, and people do not need to know. They'll feel something from you. Your radiance will reach into them and they'll feel your presence, but they won't know it's you. They won't know it's you. They'll just feel a certain way. And if they start to notice a pattern, like pattern recognition, if they start noticing, well, I feel a certain way when whenever this person is around me, well then, you know, they'll, maybe they'll start to to, to uh, bring it over towards a, a cause, you know, by standing next to you or being in the same room as you are. Uh, but for the most part, they don't need to know. They don't need to know. It's not for them to know. This is why you don't go on television or in the movies or on stage and go, yes, I have Kundalini. Oh. You know, you won't, you won't necessarily do that. Uh, what you will do, and what the Kundalini will do through you, is to bring levels of grace to this world. And, and grace affects the world in many, many different ways. People will begin to feel happy for no reason. They won't understand. You're standing next to them, and uh, you're waiting to get onto a, a train the, the famous underground of UK, right? You're waiting to get on a train with all the other people. And you get on that train and you're sitting in a, in a I guess, a, we'll just call it a, you know, a, on a seat in the train and, and everybody's standing around you. It's rush hour. Everybody's going to work. And your radiance is reaching into every single person on that train every single person on that train and 
This is what you're here to do. You're here to change the society by actually having divine grace within a, the populations of people that do not. Bringing them into levels of consciousness that they would not otherwise come to themselves. Okay. So as you, as you leave that barrister's office or, or that uh, laboratory environment, you know, you, you begin to understand how you affect this world. And of course, you know, all the while your, your kundalini changes within you are going, you know, 100 miles an hour, 150 kilometers an hour. And, uh, you know, you're, you're going, you yourself are going through all these different changes and going, you know, and, and bringing it back into the reading, you know, you're going to want to be normal, but you're not normal. You can never be normal. You can act normal. Okay. Not all the time, but you can act normal, uh, some of the time and you can act normal enough so that you're not frightening people. The idea of having Kundalini into the populations is not to make you stand out as this marvelous, fantastic figure of a, of a wizard or a witch or a, a fairy princess or any of the other magical uh, uh, you know, per personas that a person you know, is brought up with. Uh, it's not like that. It's like you are here as a, as a seed of grace helping other people come into that seat of grace. Okay. That's what you're here to do. And at the same time that you're helping other people, you're, grace is helping you. And so you're, you're, you're here kind of as a healer. You're here as a teacher. You're here as someone who is able to coalesce an amazing condition of semi-divinity within themselves and to to express that divine grace upon everything and everyone around you this is why practicing the safeties is so important to, to the point where you have you know where they're automatic you automatically forgive people you know especially the the people in your own family who are the best triggers for emotional issues uh, you forgive them. You have compassion for the people that are struggling all around you, the poor people that are struggling, the people that are having instant levels of, of, of uh, difficulty, you know, like, like they're, you know, a, a friend of theirs just dies or something like that. You know, you need to have compassion for these people. And by you having compassion, you're teaching others to have compassion. By you being forgiving, you're, you're teaching others to be forgiving. And you're spreading these levels of grace all around the world within this really wicked world of turmoil. Okay. Human-induced turmoil. <laughs> we are often our own worst enemies, uh, and so this is why that this is why you can't fit in, and yet you can fit in. You can pretend to fit in, but you cannot fit in the way you have always perhaps wanted to. See? When you have a great gift. The great gift also has you. Okay, and you, because the gift is not in your control, the gift is actually controlling you more than you're controlling it, you must surrender to that great gift. And when you're surrendering to that great gift, you must, you must surrender deeply down to your core. So the kundalini will, you know, it'll often be gentle with you in the sense that it will allow you to just kind of give yourself, you know, oh, I surrender to kundalini. Yeah, sure, I do. No, I, I do. I, I, you know, I let the kriyas come and I don't talk to the entities even though, you know, my psychic senses are increasing. You know, but deep down in your core you're going, no. I want it my way or the motorway. 
my way or the motorway, as they say in the UK. Okay. So, you need to change that platform. You need to bring your surrender deeply into the core of your being. Deeply. So that, so that when you're emptying the cup all the way, you empty the cup all the way. You're not just tipping it. You're emptying it all the way out so that it can be refilled with divine knowledge, with, with divine interaction, with divine grace, divine skills, divine attitudes. Attitudes that cover the noble qualities, the noble expressions like forgiveness, like compassion, Okay, like loyalty, like honesty, like truth, like love, like love that is that is non-judgmental. It's important for you to see this and to know this and to bring this into yourself. It does you no good to sit there and and try to to on the outside, you know, say that you surrender to the Kundalini. On the inside, you're only surrendering to your ego. And let's face it, most people live the, the major proportion of their lives from their ego. And so what I'm suggesting is no small thing. It is a very big thing. You are changing the dynamic of how you make your choices, how you make your decisions, what you do in life, what you don't do in life. Uh, you're changing that from an egotistic-based uh, platform to a divine platform. And that is not as simple as it sounds. But it is what must happen. And it is what is happening to you. So I'm going to suggest that instead of continuously missing the train that is stopping in your heart and saying, okay, Chrisim, hop on board. This, this train goes to the heavenly fields. Well, that you get on that train. And and the heart is is an entire, uh, it's an entire uh, uh, range and world of of actions and activities and feelings and it is it's like its own planet. And so you hop on that train in the heart and you start to be educated about how divinity wants you to live your life through qualities of love that are not common in the populations. That are not common. You don't seek out revenge. You don't step on other people to get ahead uh, you know, in, in a society or a job or a relationship. You don't go out of your way to, to kill other creatures like spiders or rats or, uh, you know, any kind of an insect or small mammal that you, you have been programmed to, to feel as a nuisance or a pest or as dangerous to your home or to yourself. So it's very important for, for people to realize that you must change to your core. You must change to your core, to the core of who you are. To lose the identity that is based in the ego. All your life you've been, you know, Chrisim, or Chris Mitchell, you know, or any of the number of nicknames that, that your family has given you or, you know, that you have learned to live by. Now you're just Kundalini. Now you're Kundalini. That is who and what you are. And when I say semi-divinity, uh, it's not like there's a line in you and, you know, one half of you is divine and the other half of you isn't. Uh, what is happening is that your whole being is being changed you know clearly 50 percent of that being that you are is being changed but it's not you know it's not a line right now and you're not vivisected by it 
It's just that you are elevated in your vibration, you're elevated in your understanding, you're elevated in your energy into a different realm of being. You have a permanent connection to divinity, and that divine quality, that divine uh, place that, that has created this world and created humanity is helping you through its presence, direct humanity in very, very specific ways. And those ways are of the compassion, the forgiveness, uh, the endurance, the honesty, the truth, the love, the love of creation, the love of God. Everything is created through divinity, through a divine construct. Everything has a divine blue blueprint. And it's that blueprint that should help you recognize the divine in everything that you see. And Kundalini allows that to occur. You actually see the divine in everything that's around you. Okay. And through that vision, you know that the divine is everything around you. And that includes all the things that you've been programmed to find are disgusting, are not right, are fearful, harmful, dangerous. All of these things are expressions of divinity upon this world. And you must appreciate them. You must have that level of love, that uncompromising, non-judgmental love for all creation, every aspect of it. So this, too, is not a normal expression. This is not normal for you to feel this way and to see these things and to understand life in this way. This is not what the herd, the human herd, is doing. Nobody else is doing this except you. And that is the way it needs to be. Grace could come around and tap everybody on the head and awaken everybody's kundalini. Boom. That could be done. But that is not the way that it is being done. Karma is being used to teach people to come into grace within lines of permission that allow them to, to find balance in the living of their lives and through the living of their lives to their karma. <laughs> I've got somebody who's writing me here. It's just, it's just like, hello, my friend. This is what they're writing to me right now. The grace of Kundalini is the most difficult and horrifying thing I've ever had to face and surrender. To whoever says that Kundalini and the divine spiritual path is wonderful all the time is just plain wrong and lying to themselves. <laughs> Self-realization, inner work, and looking at all your demons is terrifying, but the most rewarding. And I have to agree with this person. It can be terrifying. Nobody else really around you is being forced to look out at their demons, except, you know, like the drug addicts. You know, like if you do enough methamphetamine, you will literally start seeing the demons that you have invited into yourself by doing that type of a drug. Uh, but with Kundalini, you can you you don't need to be a drug addict. You can see them. You can just see them, and it's not an illness. It's an opening into the psychic, and you won't just see demons. You'll also see angels. You'll also see the positive aspects of it. Uh, but he's right. This is not an easy task that I'm suggesting here. It's not easy. It's not easy to not be normal. And I know, there's some of you out there that says, I never wanted to be normal, I'll never be normal, you can't, I will not even spell the word normal normally. <laughs> That's great, okay. Good, good, good. Don't get too attached to being abnormal. Okay. You've got to live the Kundalini Contrast, which was the name of the piece that I just wrote to you. Uh... Here's a little diagram that I just kind of doodled, so you'll have to forgive my artwork, okay? I actually doodled this a little while ago for, for another student. So here you have the spirit world. Here you have the earth world. Here you have the kundalini world right here in the middle. And it's the kundalini world that rules this world and this world because it is comprised of both. This is a, a diagram 
of the two that are one and the one that is two. Okay. So this is what's going on inside you, folks. For those of you that have the Kundalini activated or awakened, this is what's happening inside of you. And you don't, if you're in the activated state, you know, there's levels of fear. Even in the awakened state, there's levels of fear. If you're not openly trusting this, this amazing thing that's happening to you, that can be fearful. And I don't want you to be fearful. You know, when I ask you to, to change yourself to your core, I don't want you to be afraid to do that. Changing yourself to the core is an act of beauty. It is an act of grace. It is a good thing. It is a loving thing to do. And it increases your fearlessness, your courage, your ability to open into the greater understanding that Kundalini is bringing to you. So let your core be changed. Don't go around like everybody else and live your life from the ego. Even though that's the way you've always done it. This is the next platform. This is the next stage. Thanks for watching.